It's Friday, the 23rd of June. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And as new details emerge about the Ocean Gate sub that was lost in a catastrophic implosion last Sunday while exploring the Titanic wreck, it's sounding like the construction of this vessel was an accident waiting to happen. Let's look at some of the construction details investigators will be looking at. In aviation, when you go on into an experimental aircraft program, you go into it taking baby steps, little tiny steps all along the way in a carefully choreographed program. In aviation, even after you have proven your experimental aircraft, you cannot take, you cannot use that aircraft for hire. You cannot use that aircraft for a ticket to ride program. So one of the many things investigators will be looking at is what was the test program for this vessel. The Ocean Gate submarine was a highly experimental vehicle using a carbon fiber tube five inches thick with two titanium end caps bolted onto the end of it. And thanks to the sub brief, the Titan tragedy video where he has videos of the actual construction, we can take a closer look at some of the construction details of particular interest to me was how did they fasten the titanium ends onto the carbon fiber tube. Carbon fiber is often used in pressure vessels which are subject to tension loads. This is the first time that I've heard of where a carbon fiber tube has been used under compression loads like that found extreme pressure found in the uh, use of this submarine. So when you lay these carbon fibers up in these pressure vessels, typically, as you can see in these pictures, they lay them up in a diagonal fashion, favoring the length of the vessel rather than just straight perpendicular to the vessel. If you simply loom the carbon fiber material in a perpendicular fashion like this without getting a good angle across the length of the tube, that's an inferior design. As we all know, carbon fiber is, again, very strong in tension, pulling it apart, but rather weak in compression. Now, how did they attach the end caps on here? And again, thanks to the subbrief, the Titan tragedy, where he found this video of them, of the actual construction of the vessel, the titanium ends were bolted on to a pair of titanium rings that were glued on to the carbon fiber tube. So it looks like here they are applying the glue, if you will, or the adhesive to the inside lip of the titanium ring, which is going to glue onto the five inch thick carbon fiber tube. Then the bolts, which will attach the titanium end caps, which will seal you inside the vessel until which time crews from outside the vessel can unbolt it. Those bolts will attach through this flange of the titanium ring. Now with the e adhesive in place, they're going to place this titanium ring onto the carbon fiber tube. They also place adhesive on the exterior edge of the carbon fiber tube here. And then in a one shot deal before the glue dries or adhesive dries, they play, they place the titanium ring on top of the carbon fiber tube. Though the titanium ring is a closely close tolerance machined part, this end of the carbon fiber tube is not. So what investigators are going to be looking at is the integrity of this joint and the dissimilar metals represents a couple of engineering problems. As this vessel descends to these pre extreme pressure depths and temperatures, each time they do this, that represents a cycle. Carbon fiber has a limited number of cycles that it can take before it's no longer usable or it loses its structural integrity. Also too, this dissimilar metal construction here with the different rates of cooling, that joint could easily fail. And it seems to me that you could also easily squeeze the tube and pop that titanium ring right off the end of the vessel. Even though the pressures are gonna be tending to hold this whole thing together, if the carbon fiber deforms more than the titanium, that's where I could see this titanium ring popping right off of it. 
Another problem with carbon fiber construction is the lack of NDT or non-destructive testing. It's the only way to really tell if you've got a good joint with carbon fiber is to destructively test it, cut it open and see how it's doing. It's hard to do quality control when you're looming up and laying up the carbon fiber construction like this. If you get any air gaps in here during the construction process, that's going to weaken the structure. And this is some of the many reasons why this type of construction is not used in deep submersible vessels. There's no way, unlike a, a steel structure or a titanium or a metal structure, which can be tested using non-destructive testing techniques such as x-rays, magnaflux, any number of things, you can't test these things until they fail. And when they fail, they fail catastrophically and suddenly. So as salvage crews get the wreckage up off the ocean floor, they'll be able to easily reconstruct the exact failure mode that this vessel failed in. And then it'll be a long story of the human factors and human errors that went into the construction and design of this vessel that created this fatal accident. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.